Hey there everyone, my name is Tommy Dobbs and today I'm going to be talking to you about tambourine. We're going to start with the basic hand positioning, body positioning, and stroke types. Alright, let's dive in to the tambourine. First things first, holding the instrument. So the way I do it is I take my non-dominant hand, which for me is my left hand, and we're going to place the rim of the tambourine right where the fingers meet the palm. Now this will change depending on how long or short your fingers are, how big your fingers are, things like that. But for me, it rests right here, the rim right there. So we're going to take the tambourine, this being the rim, and we're going to place it right on that little joint area. We're going to place our thumb on the top, basically splitting the tambourine in the two hemispheres. And we're going to grip the bottom like so. And for more articulation, I put my middle finger on the actual tambourine head. Some players will put gaff tape in a square or they'll take moleskin, but for me, I just take my middle finger and I put it gently onto the head. The next step in holding the tambourine is body placement. Where should I, my body be in relation to the tambourine, in relation to the conductor, in relation to the music stand, all those things. For me, the tambourine likes to be at about a 45, 35 degree angle to the ground, not straight up, not flat, something like this. That way I can get to the articulate passages. And I can also get to the shake roll and get the jingles going. But more on that later. All right, now that we have the hand positioning and body positioning under control, let's talk about one more important thing. This hole that's in the back of the tambourine, and you'll see it on a lot of tambourines. This is meant for you to mount the tambourine to a cymbal stand. It's not meant for your fingers or an extra grip or anything like that. It can actually cause you a lot of pain and maybe even end your career. So imagine, young players, putting your finger in here and someone yanking this tambourine. That's a game changer. Please avoid that. All right, going back to the muffling of this instrument, I want to demonstrate four strokes with the middle finger on and with the middle finger off so you can hear why I muffle it like I do. Here's with it on. And off. On and off. Okay, now that we've discussed hand positioning, body positioning, and muffling, we're going to talk about stroke types. Stroke types are the same with snare drum, keyboard instruments, or timpani. We use an implement, something, an object to strike the instrument, and here our implement is our hand. So what we're going to do first is create a sock puppet. You take your four fingers and put them together then take your thumb and support them, and I move just like this. I try to use mostly wrist. There is a little arm movement, but later when we go to louder dynamics, there's a lot of arm movement. So let's start first with going about mezzo forte to double, triple P, okay? Here's the first stroke. We're gonna take our sock puppet, and we're going to place it about center. You can go off center if you'd like. And the goal here is to transition from the center to the edge of the tambourine. And as I move ever so slightly, I'm going to change my implement. And I have little terms that I use, especially for my younger players. So we have our sock puppet, we have our fancy, we have our super fancy, and we got what I call sweet tea, just like this. We're also going to add a combination of heel and palm on the instrument as well. So let's start. I'll do four hits each to demonstrate the different timbres of the instrument. Here we go, our sock puppets first. Center of the head, four hits. Now we'll move a little bit, heading towards the rim. We have our super fancy. And we have our sweet tea. So again, let's say for example you need to play softer than that. We can add more dryness to the instrument by adding skin. We're going to take the heel of our hand and put it on the head, wrap our fingers around to where they're not touching a jingle but just right around the rim. Place our thumb here and our index finger right there. And what we're going to do is imagine a rubber band being pulled up 
and it snaps down. It is kind of a violent act. The softer you play, the no sound happens. So you actually have to put a good amount of force in. I'll show you. Now let's say, for example, you need to play softer than that. I mentioned that the holding position of this instrument is about a 35, 45 degree angle. We can also flip it completely flat and what I call the waiter grip. Take our hand just like this, all you server people out there, and put at the bottom, like so. And we'll do the same thing. Take the heel of your hand, place it on the head, place your fingers around the side, slowly lift up. Nice. Now I will go through all of these in succession for you so you can see. And there's how you play from mezzo forte to triple P. Okay, now that we've talked about how to go from a mezzo forte down to the smallest, smallest dynamics, we're going to go the opposite now. I'm gonna show you two more strokes that I use. But first, let's go back to the sock puppet, four fingers together, supported by your thumb. Play it about off center, or right in the center, depending on what you'd like to do. And we just move our wrists like so. Now, to go up for accented notes, I take my fist and I try to place the knuckles of my fist against the head like this. Same motion. I call this knocking on the door. So I'll play a side by side, sock puppet to knocking on the door. Now, there is one more. I save this one for rooftop accents, like this, with the dot, or if the conductor just says, add a little extra spice there at the very end. So what we're gonna do is create our knocking on the door fist again, and instead of using this motion, we're actually going to jam our hand into the tambourine to where the whole hand meets it like this, not just the knuckles, but all of this. And there's a little canal inside your hand right here. The air that's trapped right here is going to shoot out creating this pop sound. And I only use this for those moments where I really need to add a little something extra at the very end. I'll play all three for you. Sock puppet, knocking on the door, and lights out. The next evolution in your tambourine playing is the roll. There are many different types of rolls on this instrument. We have shake rolls, finger rolls, thumb rolls, and a roll that I like to teach all my directors and young students, the special sauce roll. This term, special sauce, and this technique was coined by the founder and creator of these instruments that I'm using, Neil Grover, and championed by John Parks IV. Here's why I like it, there's two reasons. First, unlike all the other percussion instruments besides hand drums, we don't get a chance to touch our instruments. There's always an implement or gravity or something between us and our instrument. Here, we actually get a chance to touch the instrument and any chance I get to do that and feel it, I take that opportunity. Second, I teach all my directors and young students this and it takes about a minute, 60 seconds. We're gonna test that right now, okay? First things first, with your non-dominant hand holding the tambourine, we're gonna put it perpendicular to the floor. That way the jingles can remain free to move. Now this is going to be nice and relaxed over here and the same with this hand. Then a 90 degree angle from our thumb, we're going to take the middle two fingers here and we're gonna place them on the tambourine like so. So again, 90 degree two fingers. Now for my younger students, I teach them this. Imagine you're holding a floppy fish. You just grab it out of the water and it's going crazy. We're going to imagine that's our middle two fingers. Now let them wiggle. You can see it like this. 
Now, it's important that your arms remain loose so the tambourine and jingles can move. Now, here's the next thought. The faster you wiggle, or that fish is going, the more excited the jingles become, the louder, more energetic the roll. The slower you start, or the less wiggle, the softer. Right? Now, we can add crescendos, starting nice and slow, and gradually speeding up. And from this angle. All right, that's the special sauce roll. Give it a shot. <laughs>